let's get into the word. Okay, I have this nice, really girly kind of slide here. <laughs> I, I put it up there, and, and of course, my daughter was peering over my shoulder, says, I like that, I like, use that, use that, use that, you know? Uh, okay, so okay, for her, I'm using this slide. And the title of this message is The Power of Hope. Okay, the power of hope. And we need a steady diet of hope. A lot of people are hopeless. And I'm not talking about hope, the, the worldly kind of hope, where I hope something good happens. You know, sana, in Tagalog, sana. And that's not the kind of hope I'm talking about. Remember, the past two weeks, we've been talking about hope. We've been talking about having a good expectation, right? Or sorry, a confident expectation of good. And that's the kind of hope that we're talking about. It's a hope that is sure. We have thrown the word hope so loosely in our vernacular, in our uh, daily conversations. Now, you know, we say things like, well, I, I hope he shows up. I hope I get good grades. I hope, you know, I get a good review in the, in the annual evaluation at work. I hope, you know, I, I close the deal. And, and we use it this way when, in fact, hope always meant confident expectation of good. So when you say, I'm hoping that I will get, let's say, for the youth, good grades, there is this confident expectation of good grades. You don't have to cross your fingers. You don't have to knock on wood. You don't have to, you know, throw a feather over your shoulder or anything like that. You don't need to rub a rabbit's foot. You know why? Because it is a confident expectation. It's as sure as the sun will set tonight and rise again tomorrow. I mean, there's no worry involved whatsoever. It is so sure. That's hope. Let me start off by giving you a verse, okay? In uh, <clears throat> Hebrews 7.19, the Bible says, For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope. See that? A better hope through which we draw near to God. Can you imagine if hope is sana? There's, there is the bringing in of a better wish, a better sana. I mean, if it were like that, I mean, kawawa naman tayo, di ba? The law makes it so much worse, but we're not that much better off. Because we're still in sana, we're still not sure. But the, the counter of God to the law is a better hope. It's a better expectation of good things. That's really what this means. So, the law made nothing perfect. Now, the law is good. Okay, some people are, you know, sometimes when I talk about this, people say, well, then that means the law is not good. You know, it was made for the unrighteous. We saw in 1 Timothy 1, 9, and, uh, or it was given because of sin. So the law must not be good. No, the law is good. Romans 7 says that very clearly. The law is good. It is established. But the law is powerless to make one perfect. It is powerless to change anyone. It simply says... This is God's requirements. That's all. It will not do anything to help you meet those requirements. That's why the Bible says that the handwritten requirements that were against us were nailed to the cross. See? These written, uh, handwritten requirements were against us. All it says is, thou shalt not, and here we are, always doing it because we're powerless and it makes us feel so bad because we know it's wrong and that's why even Paul in Romans 7 was saying that he with his mind he was serving God why he knows but in his body that which is evil I do and the good that I want to do that I do not see he, he was powerless even though he knew thou shalt not he knew thou shalt not commit adultery. He knew thou shalt not bear false witness. He knew thou shalt not take the, Lord, uh, the name of the Lord in vain. He knew all those things, but he found himself coveting and lusting and all that stuff like that. And it was destroying, literally it was killing him. He called it this body of death. Who can deliver me from this body of death? That's why the law made nothing perfect. God gave the law, but it didn't change the people. They were just as sinful and corrupt as before the law was given see and so now he said on the other hand that means in this new covenant there is the bringing in of a better hope that speaks of the new covenant 
It is a better hope, a better expectation. It's a confident expectation that God is now on your side. You know what? It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what struggles you're struggling with. It doesn't matter if you think you need deliver deliverance. It doesn't matter if you're struggling with certain um, bondages, although you've been set free. But, you know, or, or whatever it is, I want you to know something. God is always on your side. Amen? Amen? I mean, He will never go against you. Never. doesn't matter what you do, what you say. It doesn't matter. Even if it's right after your sin, He's still on your side. That's why it's a better hope. See, there is that confident expectation. That's why He says, I will remember your sins. How often? No more. No more. You sin, he forgot it already. While you're sinning, he forgot it too. Is that a license to sin? Of course not. Please, do not leave this place saying that I'm giving you a license to sin. Okay? Because it's like saying it's a license to kill. Because the wages of sin is death. So this is not a license to sin. But, you still need to understand the overwhelming grace and mercy of our God is such that even if you sin, He is still on your side. You know why? Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He nailed your sins and mine on the cross, never ever to be taken against you again. That's why God's holiness is on your side. Amen? Amen. We need to preach on that. God's holiness is on your side. We've been talking about the last two weeks. We spoke about having a fearful expectation of judgment or bad versus uh, over a, uh, uh, I mean, versus a confident expectation of good. Last week we spoke about two obstacles to having a confident expectation of good. And now we want to look at the power of hope because this is where it all boils down to. And we need to, you know, part of the good news is hope. It's hope. The world the Bible says, is without hope, I think it's uh, Ephesians chapter 2, without God and without hope. See? That means, it's not that they were without hope in the sense that they will never get saved. When it says without hope, that means they do not have a confident expectation of good. Sometimes, you know, our theology gets in the way if our theology is not right. Let's say you're talking to a friend. Okay, I was just thinking about this and I said, Lord, how gracious is your grace? And this scenario or vision started to unfold. Let's say you're talking to a friend and your friend doesn't know Jesus, right? Now, you know Jesus. And so you have a confident expectation of good. That person doesn't. So they're hoping in the worldly sense, hoping. Hoping that they'll get a good mark, you know, uh, in school or hoping that they'll get a good evaluation at work or hoping that they can ride out this financial crisis and all that stuff like that. That's why for us, there is no financial crisis. You know why? Because we have a confident expectation of good. That's why in the kingdom, there is no crisis. In this church, there is no crisis. Amen? Amen. In your life, there is no crisis. Amen? It doesn't exist. It only exists in your mind. And if you meditate in it, then you will worry. So anyway, let's say you're sharing with this friend who doesn't know Jesus. Now, because you know him, you know, because you know the Lord, you know that the Lord loves him or her. Doesn't matter what his life is like. Doesn't matter what God he worships. Doesn't even matter if he's a Satanist. God loves him. And if God loves him, God's goodness wants to reach out to him. So now, because you know God, even if you don't know that person's uh, situation, you can always say, do you know that you can actually expect good things to happen to you? You can tell them that. See? Of course, they won't believe you. And they're going to ask you, how do you know that? Uh, and you can always say, because I know my God. My God causes me to expect good things all the time. And you know what? Just like Joshua said, not one of the promises failed. Not one. 